Okay, I'll try to talk so that everyone can hear me. How, how is everyone this morning? Awesome. Are we all energized from that opening keynote? Now we get to uh, build our community and build diversity in our community. I am Nathan Gray, and this talk is Pair Programming and Code Review. I am really excited about this topic. Um, in the past, I've given talks, and they've been pretty technical. And I just couldn't think of anything technical to talk about this year. This year was getting a new job, and I've been working on a novel. And I'm doing lots of things that I've never done before. And so my, my technical um, focus has really been kind of lacking. I was like, what am I going to write about? And then... Um, or talk about. And then I realized that we've been doing a lot of code review recently. And with this new job, I've been having to work with other programmers a lot more. And I was like, well, let's just talk about that then, working with other people, which fits in very nicely with the keynote about working with other people and finding diversity and not just focusing on yourself and how you do things. I work at ThinkGeek. And this year, we started doing code review on every commit. In the past, we've done code review from time to time, or we talk to each other when um, we, we weren't really sure what, um, what architectural decisions to make or whatever. But it was just kind of spotty. Um, for legal reasons, we decided that we needed to have a separate set of eyes for every commit for security, to make sure that we're not scamming um, the company, the shareholders. But for us as programmers, we found that there's actually a much better reason to do that. And that's because, one, we get to interact with each other and find that diversity. And two, we write much better code. Um, for instance, if I've written some code and then know, oh, I'm going to have to turn this over to Guillaume or Jennifer, and they're going to look at my code, I start thinking, what questions are they going to ask me? What, what, are they, what point are they going to get to? And they're going to be like, why did you do that? And so I'm starting to ask myself questions as if I'm a code reviewer. And so that's helped a lot. Um, and for us also, it's very much about improvement because we personally want to become better programmers. We want to do a better job. Um, we had a discussion with a fellow from Motley Fool last week or the week before, and we started talking about improvement, and we had the realization that if we're not improving – like, say there's someone on the team or someone that they just don't quite get it and, they, and they're not progressing, they're not becoming better, then what's really the point of having them on the team? Because you're just doing an injustice to them. They're not improving. They don't feel like they're being a better person. And it's not helping the team get better. And so... Even though when we're in the trenches, there are a lot of times when we just want to focus on we want to get this done, there's a deadline. Um, it's really important to not only get stuff done, but also to think about how is this project helping me to become a better programmer? Um, I also, last month was introduced to um, two amazing resources. One was a paper that's called The Role of Deliberate Practice in the Acquisition of Expert Performance. And that was written back in 1993, so it's nothing new, but I'd never come across it. Amazing. Um, I'll give a link to that at the end. And another article called How Not to Talk to Your Kids, The Inverse Power of Praise. And that was published in 2007. I'll give a link to that, too. 
but both of those have given me a lot of insight into improvement and how you can become better. We're also a homeschool family, and so my wife talks to me a lot about how we can improve our children. And part of it is, you know, they've got to do the assignments. And part of it is, how can we spark in them an interest in learning so that they will be pushing the curriculum instead of us having to say, well, are you interested in this? But have them come to us and be like, this is what I really want to learn about. She went to a conference last month and came back with a stack of CDs from the different presentations. And she's immediately like, you have got to listen to these. <laughs> and so I did. I listened to some of them. And the first one I listened to, um, it was called, let's see, where is it? Um, Mentoring Your Children, Sweet Spot or Thud by Angela Baker. She goes around to different homeschool conferences. And I thought that fit in. I mean, we're not doing homeschool here in the Pearl community. Well, some of us are. But, like, that's not what the community is about. But we do have mentoring, or we should be doing mentoring. And a lot of the principles that apply to mentoring children apply to mentoring other programmers. And when we have interactions with other programmers, do we get a feeling that, wow, this is going awesome. This is the sweet spot. Or is it kind of a thud kind of experience where you're like, ah, I don't think that worked out. Maybe I don't want to uh, go talk with him again for a little while or ever. Um, what, what kind of experiences are we having? Um, so I'd kind of like to know from the audience, how many of you have ever, just at least once, had code review done or done code review or worked with pair programming with someone else? Okay, that's a pretty good number, at least 75%. And how many of you do code review or pair programming on a regular basis? Okay, that's still a little bit more than I was expecting, probably about third. Um, There was a um, finding that was published back in 1932 um, by Trowbridge and Kaysen. And they said that in the absence of adequate feedback, efficient learning is impossible and improvement only minimal even for highly motivated subjects. Hence, mere repetition of an activity will not automatically lead to improvement in especially accuracy of performance. So that tells me if we are looking for improvement, we can't just do the same thing over and over. Even if we call that practice, it's, it's not the same. We need to have adequate feedback. And so what kind of feedback is that? What is adequate feedback? The article on the inverse power of praise has some very interesting things to say about that. It says, Scholars found consistent correlations between a liberal use of praise and students' shorter task persistence, more eye-checking with the teacher, and inflected speech such that answers have an intonation of questions. And also, when we praise children for their intelligence, we tell them that this is the name of the game. Look smart. Don't risk making mistakes. Uh, so that's that's a little bit interesting. I'd never thought that praise could be a bad thing, and that's what that whole article is about. It's very good reading. There was one study that they did with some children in the New York um, public school system, and they were given a test, identical test. I think this is with the fifth grade students. And after the test, they were each told... Uh, a single phrase and half of them randomly picked were told you must be smart at this and the other half were told you must have worked really hard and that's all they said to them 
was the one phrase or the other. In the next part of the study, they said that they were going to administer another test to them, but they got to choose which test they wanted. There was one that would be a little bit harder and would challenge them, but they'd be able to learn some new things from it. And the other test, they told, was about the same or maybe a little easier than the test that they'd just taken. They found that the people who'd been told that they were smart decided that they would rather take the easier test. And the people who'd been told that they had worked really hard, almost all of them chose to take the harder test. Um, I thought that was pretty amazing. Um, and I started thinking in my personal life about am I rewarding myself personally for working hard, for being consistent, for being diligent, or am I rewarding myself for specific results? I mentioned that I'm working on a book. This is a novel. I've never written a novel before. It's taken me several years so far, and I don't feel like I'm progressed much further than I was before. I've learned a lot, but definitely no results yet. But every once in a while, I'll have a writing day that is just awesome. And I will have so many cool ideas, and it'll just flow out of my head through my fingers into my laptop. It's great. But I started noticing there's a pattern. When I have one of those really amazing days, it is very hard for me to sit down and write the next day and the day after that and the day after that. It takes three or four days usually before I feel like I can sit down and just have my ideas flow out again. And I realized after reading this article that that is exactly what they're talking about. If we focus on the results, it, it is much harder for us to want to keep trying. But if we focus on the effort, then there's no uh, bad consequence for trying things. Um, kind of connected to that, uh, the article was talking about people who have too frequent rewards they won't develop any persistence because they'll stop working once the rewards disappear. And so I'm trying to apply all these ideas back to code review and pair programming. And so I think some of the things to take away from this are when we sit with someone else or we're reviewing someone else's code or someone's reviewing our code, then we need to focus on specific things, uh, complement specific things. And it needs to happen while it's fresh in our minds. We can't learn from things if it happened so long ago that we can't even remember programming it. And the trick is to also continually improve what our expectations are. If we just have a list of it has to do this and has to do this, um, like for the security type stuff, you have to make sure there aren't any SQL injection vulnerabilities or whatever. If that's all you're focused on, then your code's going to stop improving. You're going to get to that level of result and you're going to stop trying to do it anymore. Um, so the trick is to um, work with other people and find out what's also important to them. And so, like for us, we've got a team of several people. And so if I work with just myself, then I know, oh, it has to meet these expectations, and then it's good enough. But if I'm going to give it to someone else, Kate, say, then I know, oh, I'm going to have to do this. Uh, to focus on these things because those are the points that she is very um, focused on. Um, some of the things just as a general practice that everyone can think about are 
unit tests? Have you written a unit test for that to prove that what, what you've written works? Um, if you know that you're going to have your code code reviewed, then does it make sense? Have you put comments above each section of code to say this is what's happening? True, if you're a good programmer, you can read through and figure out. But it's a lot easier if you're code reviewing if they say right at the top, I am doing this, and then you see the code. Oh, yes, that's exactly what they said that they were doing. Um, come up with descriptive names for variables and subroutines. That is something you can definitely practice. Just on your own, just come up with five different names for that variable and then stick with the one that's best. One of the things that I found that I'm doing more and more is if there's some part of the code that I feel uneasy about, I'm just not quite comfortable with it, or I think I hope that this passes code review and that I don't ever have to work on this part of the code again. If I have that kind of feeling, that means I better rewrite it right now. <laughs> Um, another thing is reformatting. There are times when, you know, you want to keep everything on a single line or whatever formatting you want. But if it doesn't make sense, if it's really confusing that way, try spacing a different way. Um, indent stuff, outdent stuff, whatever. Uh, try it until it looks right and then comment it nicely. Um, so yes, go through and code review your own code line by line. Now as far as working with other programmers, a lot of us are pretty introverted and a lot of us feel like we are under deadline and we've got pressure to get stuff done. So it's very important when you're working together to be courteous. Um, that means don't just assume that someone else has time to code review or pair program with you. And even if they do have time, make an appointment. That could be as simple as walking up to them and saying, are you going to have time sometime today that we can work together or how, however you want to phrase it. It can be that kind of informal or it can be a very formal process where you do it through your ticketing system or you send them an email or, I don't know, you send them a nice card with scripty or I don't know. It depends what you want to do. But it's very important to be courteous and ask them if they can do code review with you. Um, another step that we've implemented recently that's helped is before we even have another programmer look at it, we run it through our set of rules for Perl Critic. And that way we know right off the code compiles, it follows these basic things that, that are important to our company. And so that's the first sanity check. And, and that helps me be like, yes, I passed my code review, I passed Pro Credit's Pro Review, now I can give it to someone else. Um, there are different types of ways that you can work. You can sit together and have one person drive. And we found that that works best if neither person knows the answer. And so you're both working together to try to solve the issue. Um, there are other times when you want sort of the junior person, the student, to be driving. Um, and that's very helpful, especially if you're trying to get them to understand your coding style or something like that. But that's a very exam-like setting. Um, you can have the expert drive. And we found that that works best for just getting a general familiarity for that part of the code base, <coughs> where they're sort of shadowing. But you have to make sure that that goes slow enough and that the focus is on teaching and learning rather than getting that specific task done. And a lot of times it just works best to work apart, to work separately, but then come together at the end, either to sit together at the end or to um, just put up notes in a ticket or something. Um, 
I hope that we can all do better at this. I found that it's improved my code a lot to have other people look at it. It's a little bit scary at the beginning, and I'm like, there's no way that someone else is going to like this. But every once in a while, I get really good compliments, and then I feel better, and then I want to go through and practice harder myself. And um, we don't really have time for questions because they've already asked me, but uh, go forth and have a great conference. Thank you.